Welcome to Use JSON to Simplify Communication with Control Add-ins. Hey, I'm Eric, and I am not on my way to the moon, but Artemis, can you see, here we go. Artemis is actually on the way to the moon, which is pretty cool. So, uh, go. Anyway, back to something that is not as cool as going to the moon, AL code. And sometimes it can be, you know, like try to communicate with the moon if you are trying to communicate between AL and JavaScript in a control add-in. Um, and recently I stumbled over some code that thought, hmm, th there's probably a better way of doing this. And there is. Um, and um, it's probably easier to, to show than trying to tell. Um, so I grabbed the last time we did something with control add-ins here on the channel, and that seems to be the uh, the height hack. Um, so here's a very simple control add-in. Hopefully you've seen this video because you're a subscriber. If not, please consider subscribing. Uh, there will be hacks and unicorns and I don't know what. Uh, we have a control add-in, a very simple control add-in in this case. Um, I can actually try to run it just to so we have control add in and the control add in basically just becomes a orange blob. Um, but an orange blob that will have the correct height, uh, which was the content of the other video. Uh, if we only allowed to publish, come on PC. Well, while that one is publishing, um, so the, the way we communicate with a control add-in is through uh, two ways. The way is two ways. That was kind of weird. Uh, oh, here we go. Give me an orange blob. Come on, PC, you can do it. Give me an orange blob. There we go. That's orange. Excellent. Now we're cooking. Okay. Uh, I think I restarted my Docker. Uh, just before the video. Anyway, so so the way a control add-in is communicating with BC or BC is com communicating with that is through the functionality we put here, um, and uh, we we can we can create an event. So we can create an event. I am ready. That's an event. Uh, and we could fire that. So so this is events are for when the control add-in wants to give data to BC or wants to tell BC something. Um, so we 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 could uh, we can we can call that by calling Microsoft Dynamics dot nav dot invoke extensibility method. And the method we want to invoke is our event, so that's the one called I am ready. Um, and actually, let's see, that's a string, so we need to put that in quotes. I'm ready, and then we can pass some parameters, and, and that's kind of it. So if we go back to our, the, that's probably a page where this thing is. Now we should be able to trigger and find I am ready and potentially do something here. We can do a message. Uh, yes, you are. So if we run this, I hit a five, I deploy, hopefully this time it's fast. There you go. We get the orange blob and we get yes, you are message. So that was I was pretty lame uh, because we're not really communicating here, right? We're just triggering uh, the, this function and nothing else. So what we can do to, to improve this is, of course, that we could say, okay, I am ready. And then we could pass parameters, name, number, right? That, that's maybe some date. It's, I, I, you know, you all, you can do this. 
this is kind of valid that, that that you have a variable that is the same type as the data type but it's just you know with the with the syntax highlighting it it, it kind of looks well let's call this the x date then it's nicer um and now this one is of course broken so we can the easiest way just to right trigger and select this one again and we get the parameters which is fine so now we can can pass and we need now here now we need to pass three um uh, three parameters and we could do that uh, eric whoa what happened there eric one two three and then we don't really have a date in uh, so this will break so let's put a zero and see what happens actually let's do let's see if we can break this so yes you are percent one percent two percent three and then that's name number an X date. Let's see how bad that date thing will break stuff here. Um, clearly something broke. The question is if we got a, uh, a break point, we did. No, we, you see we got an error, but we didn't really get a break point. So this is this is this is where it gets weird, uh, and sometimes if we go down to this guy, we should be able to see something. But we're passed on a breakpoint, but we're not really breakpointed because we got an error in something that the debugger has no idea how to handle. So method page something something. I am ready number of argument three with matching argument types not found. Um, so let's uh, let's consider that a, a failed experiment. Um, but consider the idea here is that we are slowly building something. Uh, let's actually look at here. We 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 need to pass a lot of parameters. Um, so what we can do instead of this, and and this is this so the the the, the trick of 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 this video is that in instead of doing all this we could go uh, we could do this parameters json again this thing will break instantly parameters json object um, and then what we need to oh, what we need to do in in the in the JavaScript is to pass something here, right? So now we need to build say param parameter equal something like that, and then we can do parameter depending on, on how we want to do this parameter name equal Eric and and so on, or we we could do this. We could do this even like this. Let this be a sub. Um, this, is, this, this is now it's just getting weird. But anyway, we I'm, I'm, you can build objects here, right? You can. So if we go back to this guy and then let's just see what we get in here and what let's do format. So if we do a, if you do a format parameter. So format on a JSON object will actually serialize it. Uh, so we get the, the string of it. Um, so let's see what we get now. So now we get the name Eric and the info, and that's a sub object where it has a key called Eric with the value called name. Um, so that that's an easy way of passing a lot of data in a single uh, parameter from uh, JavaScript to AL. But we can do the opposite also. Um, and somewhere in the archives of the YouTube channel there, let me see if I can find it here. Um, 
here we build um, we build this code unit that that has a like a, a rec to JSON. So let's say that we need to pass an entire record of something into JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So we could let's just grab no one, we can just grab the whole file. That's how we fly in this video. So let's just grab this whole thing uh, here and we probably need to give it a number that is okay in this context. And then we'll take a quick look at the documentation here and says, uh, we can simply pass a record to JSON .rec to JSON. Ha, that is ex excellent. So let's say, so now we want to pass something to, uh, from AL to JavaScript. So we need to create a, a procedure here. Here's some data. And we do the same thing. So we pass a JSON object to the JavaScript. So I think in this case, let's just check here. We need to say scripts equal, let's call it script.json. And we need to create that so new file script dot json not json dot dot javascript and we'll do function and now i forgot the stupid name i gave this thing here's some data data and um uh, let's uh, let's actually first pass. So we call this script. We call this script. Let's see if so. This this is kind of weird. That sometimes you see this the, the red scripty line uh, is still saying this is missing, but the compiler can clearly compile this. Um, weird. So now we could go back to our patient and then on the I am ready event call the function we just created and and the, it's kind of weird so this con is called x but we cannot do x dot that doesn't work here we have to go cur page dot x dot and then the function uh, and we need a variable of the JSON tools code unit that we just created so now we should be able to json tools dot rec to json and we'll just do rec i guess that's a customer um and uh well let's let's actually do a debug here's a debug trick uh, that i find myself use all the time so i'll go back to this function here and and supposedly this is where we 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 want to do something with the customer but we can actually do console.log data and then it will actually go into the lock in the browser. So let's see. So now all this happens. So if I do control shift, control shift I, I get this thing just above my head. Uh, I can't remember if we can actually zoom in this one. We can. How cool is that? Uh, and you see this printed out an object here. So now in JSON, we got an object uh, that if we go back to this guy, we can do an alert data 
I forgot to know how is this format. Let's look at name. So we can do name like this. Let's see here, bum bum. And we got a lot a datum corporation. So by using okay, by using a trick from another video. Uh, and we're allowed to do that. That's that's the way it works. We basically just and it's not the one on screen. Let's grab the real one. So we just passed a complete record to JavaScript in a single call, um, and now it's well. Whatever we want to do over here, it's so we could we could change this and call this customer instead uh, if if we wanted to. Um, but it it's just an object now uh, with all our data, and um, I've just so the trigger for this was that I saw crazy functions that were called multiple times uh, and multiple parameters, and that's not necessary because. We can just pass JSON objects back and forth if we want to. We could probably also pass arrays if we want. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's uh, the JavaScript uh, trick of the day. Uh, if you want to see more hacks or tricks, uh, check out this video. That's a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.